Alright, welcome in. Um, we're going to be walking through round 5 of uh, this PTQ Finals where I came in ninth place with this deck. Um, I think in round 5 we fight against Green Black Energy. Um, I was looking at the 5-0 League results the night before this tournament and seeing the Green Black decks made me a little nervous. Um, they are usually main decking four Fatal Pushes, which is really, really good against Thing in the Ice. Um, and a lot of their two drops don't die to Magma Spray. Um, there were some versions playing Sylvan Advocate alongside Snake. Um, and... Yeah, not being able to kill their two drop when they're just curving out on you, uh, especially when you're on the draw is not a winning proposition. So I was kind of worried about the green-black matchup. Turns out I played against green-black energy, where their two drops of Glint Sleep Siphoner and Long Tusk Cub are much worse against Magma Spray. Um, so, and that ends up mattering a lot in this match. And I think I played green-black energy in the match after this as well. So um, what I thought was going to be a, um, a tough matchup ends up being very very winnable so let's see this was round five all right here we go chat and let's get started so we lost the die roll had to mulligan a hand with no blue sources uh, this is a six card hand with dine Vault tower end up keeping it i i really hate mulliganing um, so we kept commit. So we just gotta live. <laughs> Here's his two drop. Drawing that sensor was real clutch. Specifically because he plays. Oh, no. Sensor does not do very much against Winding Constrictor when your opponent has 3 mana. Yeah, cycled that because if we drew Magma Spray, we got to kill Long Tusk Cub. Um, instead, this Long Tusk Cub just goes crazy on us. Uh, we have to play Dynavolt. Oh, no. Dynavolt doesn't do very much against the Cub. So we just want to counter whatever his 4 drop is going to be. So let's see, Cub is going <laughs> to get three activations. So it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. We take 10 damage. That's pretty ridiculous. He doesn't cast anything, so we don't get to use our mana here. We're not quite dead because we get to commit his Long Tusk Cub. Um, but so we do it during our upkeep. He has Blossoming Defense, uh, and we're just dead. Yeah, so... <laughs> Mulliganing to six in the dark. That was a pretty stinky hand. Um, and he had the nuts. Turn two, turn three. Uh, so we lost game one. Moving on to game two. Here's how we sideboarded. Uh, so we took out the negate, took out one sensor. I took out one gear hulk, that might be wrong. And I took out one commit. And I brought in, oh, uh, what did I bring in? I brought in the two glory bringers, and I brought in one, two, three, four. What else did I bring in? Oh, and the essence scatters. Yeah, essence scatter is very, very clutch against this deck. Like they, they just play. Sweet curve of creatures all the way up to five, so essence scatter is very good. Um, might have been wrong to cut a gear hulk. I think since they're an aggro green black deck, you want to cut some of your top end. Um, it could have been a glimmer. It could have been a torrential gear hulk. Um, yeah, but that's how we sideboarded. Could very well be wrong. Let me know what you think. This hand is great. Essence Scatter on the play is awesome. He mulligans to five. And it's looking to be a pretty 
pretty easy game. So we get to Essence Scatter, whatever he plays. Yeah. And then we get to resolve a tower here. Since we don't have our fourth land coming into play untapped, um, I want to hold up the Essence Scatter just because he could resolve like a Hydra or something here. Long Tusk Cub, we go for the Essence Scatter. Snake is not as threatening by itself. So he just says go. We're going to try to commit it. He might have blossoming defense. Um, he kills our tower in response, which is unfortunate, but that's fine. Because it gives us delirium. So I want to save the glory bringer to kill something. Um, I don't want to let him grasp it before Glorybringer gets a card. So he plays his donkey. We get to play Glorybringer. Drawing our second Glorybringer is sweet. Glorybringer is very good against this matchup. Especially when they're stuck on three lands. That's what I'm... Yeah. Yeah, I think he just concedes to the second Glorybringer. And he knows we have the Gear Hulk in our hand. Yeah. So, that was game two, he got stuck on lands, so I think game three is a little more interactive. This was round five. Game three, round five. Uh, excuse me. Okay, this hand is great. We get to play a thing on turn two. We uh, have an attune. Okay, so now I have the really interesting decision here of um, magma spraying this two drop uh, now, but then cutting myself off from a tune. So what I end up doing is not magma spraying this turn, but attuning for a mountain and then Magma Spring. So I lose um, some counters off of Thing in the Ice, but I make sure that my mana is set up for the rest of the game by doing this. Rishkar with only one guy in play is fine. Yeah, we get to play Thing in the Ice, block his Rishkar, hopefully. Yeah, he hasn't seen Thing yet, so he might have sided out Fatal Push. What is this? Gaunti. Gaunti is very good against us. He gets to... Okay, so that's not the card that he took with Gaunti. The card that he took with Gaunti is here. Like, having to play around our own counter spells is kind of a pain. <laughs> land. We really want to land here. Well... Okay, so we're going to play to the board, get some card advantage. Um, yeah, I like playing to the board better than uh, Harness Lightning here. That's fine. We're still at 20, so we're not really in a rush. Murders. Okay, so we're going to drop to 5 here. But... We're one away from our glory bringer. Yeah. So I chose not to cast Harness Lightning there because if he has Blossoming Defense, then that would just take more damage. I think he takes Glory Bringer, yep. And 
then plays the glint sleeve. So now we get to harness lightning a guy. The card that he exiled with Gaunt to was Harness Lightning. Yeah, so we're gonna get to Harness Lightning Rishkar here, and then get to Magma Spray, the Glint Sleeve. Holding up Disallow. He's going aggro here. So we're gonna drop to six, and we get to Glimmer. We bottom these two lands that come into play tapped. We draw our sixth land. That was really close. <laughs> yeah, if we did not, if we did not draw an untapped land there, winning this game would be a lot harder. Like we would have had to disallow his activation of Hissing Quagmire, but he drew his land to be able to activate it anyway. If we did that, okay. So we have to play to the board, getting a Harness Lightning, his last card is an Anticipate, or an Appetite, which gives us Delirium. So we're killing the Hissing Quagmire because we want to Traverse for Glorybringer. And he's got no cards in his hand, so this is looking real nice. Play to the board because we can. We're still holding up a bunch of action. He drew a land, the opposite of what he needed to draw, and this game is locked up. Yep. Yeah, so I had to get lucky to draw that six land on turn six. Um, we would have been at two if that had happened, in which case traversing for Glorybringer would not have stabilized for us because he would still have um, Yeah, if we didn't draw that land, we would have had to pop Evolving Wilds to get Delirium and then Traverse for Tracker to play to the board to block something, and then we would have dropped down to four, and then the next turn we would have a Gear Hulk. So I guess, yeah, we, we would have been okay, but it was much better that we drew that six land. Um... So, this matchup, it looks like he sided out his pushes, um, he didn't see it in game one, and the matchup felt very winnable. Glorybringer really impressed me in this matchup. Very happy with Glorybringer here. Alright, thanks for watching. Um, round six, we play another version of this deck next round, so uh, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in round six. Thanks.